Throughout history, leaders have had to be visible to their public, and especially so during wartime, when the national leader or his top advisers are critical to morale and national resolve. But the fact is that leaders have sometimes used body doubles for a variety of reasons, from personal security to medical reasons, or as part of secret military operations. In World War II, several leaders definitely used doubles, while some are at least suspected to have done so. Probably the most famous and well-documented example of the use of a body double in World War II was that of Field Marshal Sir Bernard Montgomery. The famous British victor of the Battle of El Alamein in 1942, and soon to be commander of all Allied land forces during the 1944 D-Day landings, he would become part of a clever MI5 plot to confuse the Germans in the run-up to the greatest amphibious operation of the war. About seven weeks before D-Day, a senior military intelligence officer spotted the strong resemblance of a bit-part actor and variety artist to Montgomery. Second Lieutenant Myrick Clifton James was a 46-year-old Australian World War I veteran, then serving in the British Army's Royal Army Pay Corps. Clifton James was contacted by Lieutenant Colonel David Niven, the Hollywood actor who was serving in British military intelligence during the war and lured to London on the pretext of starring in a propaganda film. The MI5 scenario, codenamed Operation Copperhead, was part of a plan to fool the Germans as to where the Allied invasion would actually land. Clifton James was persuaded to impersonate Montgomery and to travel to the British colony of Gibraltar in southern Spain and to be seen also around the Mediterranean to hopefully convince German military intelligence that D-Day would be directed at southern France rather than at Normandy and hopefully also confusing the Germans into redeploying divisions away from the north. On the 25th of May 1944, Clifton James arrived in Gibraltar as Montgomery, aboard Churchill's personal plane. German intelligence noted Montgomery's arrival as planned. Clifton James then flew on to Algiers and made several public appearances, reinforcing the deception. He was then hidden in Cairo, Egypt, until the Normandy landings actually occurred. Whether the plan actually worked is questionable. The Germans thought Clifton James was Montgomery, but they also thought his presence in the Mediterranean to be a ruse on the part of the British. Anyway, the whole episode became so famous that Clifton James even played himself in the 1958 John Mills film I Was Monty's Double, which is well worth a viewing if you haven't yet seen it. Clifton James died in Worthing, Sussex in 1963 at the age of 65, having achieved the celebrity that he had always desired, but by a rather curious route. It has long been suggested that Adolf Hitler had body doubles, but exhaustive research suggests that this is more of an urban myth than a reality. Various names have been put forward to support this thesis, Gustav Wehler being the most often used but little evidence exists to back up these suggestions. One of the problems is that a lot of German men copied the Hitler look out of adoration or respect for their leader, and newsreels of German soldiers and civilians show plenty of men with toothbrush moustaches and slicked-down forelocks. Rumours of Hitler doubles reached their peak in the days and weeks after the end of the war in Europe when there was a great fear that Hitler had somehow escaped from surrounded Berlin and fled into hiding. The confusion and the conspiracies surrounding the Soviets allegedly finding the corpse of Hitler in May 1945 did little to dissuade many that Hitler had indeed escaped. One body that was found outside the ruined Reich Chancellery in May 1945 has continued to generate interest. A corpse of a man superficially resembling Hitler was found laying on its back, a very neat bullet hole drilled into the centre of its forehead. On the 4th of May 1945, the corpse was filmed by Red Army troops. This is the same day as the alleged burn corpses of Hitler and his wife, Eva, were found outside the Führerbunker's emergency exit after the Soviets had interrogated captured members of Hitler's inner circle. 
Interestingly, the unburned corpse with a bullet hole in the forehead was tentatively identified as Hitler by none other than Vice Admiral Hans Foss, Hitler's naval adjutant who had been in the bunker with the Führer till the end. But Soviet investigators found that the man was wearing darn socks, and it seemed highly unlikely that a man of Hitler's stature would have worn repaired clothing. In 1992, based on research in the Russian state archives, the body was identified as Gustav Wehler, an occasional body double for Hitler who worked in the Reich Chancellery. Had the SS executed him at the same time as his master killed himself? We will never know. The general consensus among Hitler's staff and later historians is that Hitler did not use doubles. It's been suggested that Red Army investigators, in a flurry of activity to find Hitler's corpse to appease Stalin, kept misidentifying similar corpses of men who looked a little like Hitler, leading to rumours of multiple doubles being picked up by the press. Ironically, the man most obsessed by Hitler was his greatest enemy, Josef Stalin, who has long been suspected of using body doubles himself. The name most often put forward is Felix Dadeev. A former dancer and juggler, Dadeev spoke out in 2008 at the age of 88 after keeping quiet since Stalin's death in 1953, apparently for fear of punishment. Born in Dagestan and raised in Chechnya, Dadeev came to NKVD secret police notice in 1942 after he had been severely wounded in the fighting at Grozny. He had always had a strong resemblance to Stalin, and the NKVD began to use him as a body double, Stalin being paranoid about his personal security. Dadeev was about 40 years younger than the Soviet leader, but he had aged considerably due to his war injuries, and the NKVD also used makeup to age him further, and he became an accomplished mimic of the dictator. There have been several rumours that other body doubles of Stalin were used, but nothing has yet been proven. British Prime Minister Winston Churchill didn't have a body double, as far as we know, but instead a voice double. Is it possible they do not realise that we shall never cease to persevere against them until they have been taught a lesson which they and the world will never forget. Famous for his rousing radio speeches during the war, it's not commonly known that some were actually recorded by an actor mimicking Churchill's distinctive speech patterns. Actor Norman Shelley, best known for his work on BBC Children's Hour as Winnie the Pooh, and in the long-standing radio soap opera The Archers, definitely made Churchill recordings that were passed off to the public as genuine. Analysis of 20 of Churchill's radio recordings in May and June 1940 found three that didn't match his voice, and may have been Shelley's. Shelley definitely made a copy of Churchill's famous 1940 We Shall Fight Them on the Beaches speech, but in 1942 and with Churchill's permission. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on beaches landing grounds, in fields, in streets, and on the hills, we shall never surrender. Shelley is also alleged to have stood in for Churchill when the Prime Minister was too ill or out of the country on secret business. Unravelling the truth about all of this from fiction is nearly impossible, and Shelley took the secret to his grave in 1980, when he died in London at the age of 77. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.